Lovey and, and the Red, Red Claw, Claw Bunch. Bunch. Yelp. Yelp. Part, Part one. one. The new album cover looks great. It was totally worth reanimating Picasso to design it for us. I agree. He's kind of pissed. He's not sure what he's supposed to be eating. He's been uh, licking that fun young since uh, 2 a.m. I wonder if a resurrected Cubist can uh, starve back to death. This is a great record. Everyone will love it. Oh, look, uh, we already have one review. <laughs> I'll do that thing where I read it, but it comes out in someone else's voice. I know that big time music producers like myself rarely review new albums on Yelp, but damn it, that's the kind of maverick I am. And I was already on Yelp slamming the crap out of a subpar snow cone I got at the stand at the abandoned car wash. Hey, get to the point, man. I have been a fan of Lobby and the Red Claw Bunch since their Sticky Whiskers album. Oh, this sounds promising. And Lobby's voice has always reminded me of the love child of Chrissy Hind and Tom Waits. Gee, nice. And Renee's background vocals and electric tambourine get me dancing. Like only biting scarabs in my socks will. Hell yeah. And pound for pound, New Orleans is the best six foot tall, funky slap face playing lobster this producer has ever heard. Wow, he really liked our record. And it was with great anticipation that I gave the new album, Lobster Revolver, a spin. Hey, here comes the good part. Sadly, uh -oh. each track was worse than the previous one, culminating in the garbage truck full of starving piglets that was Smells Like Crustacean Spirit. Wait, there was no garbage truck full of starving piglets in that song. The second side of the album made me want to break up my ears. Oh, I'd like to break up his face. I slam Lobby. And the Red Claw Bunch here on Yelp with no fear whatsoever of retribution. Lobby, are we going to stand for this kind of review? I, it could ruin our musical careers. Right, and then we would have to rely solely on the money we make solving mysteries. Oh, mis mystery money wouldn't feed a regular sized lobster. What can we do about it? Oh, we could find him s and poke him with our enormous six foot lobster claws. Maybe snap him in half? And suck the brains out of his head. Or we could reason with him and see if we can help him understand our music. Yeah, reason with him. Snapped in half. Reason with the brain that we sucked out of his head. I'll find his address. We can leave first thing in the morning. Why not now? Our giant three-seated lobster bike is in the shop for detailing. Oh, what do you say we break in and steal it? Well, it seems extreme. <laughs> I'm an extreme six-foot-tall lobster musician. You know that, Lobby. Everyone get a good night's sleep. We'll ride our three-seated lobster bike to have our little chat with Boncho. And if our chat is not convincing enough, we boil him and eat him. With lots of butter. Is this the end of Lobby on the Red Claw Bunch's musical career? Will the confrontation with Botchko end in the gruesome lobster on human feast? Find out uh, in the next in next week's thrilling conclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, may I have your attention, please, because coming to you live from the On Air Media Studios in beautiful Dallas, Texas, this is Far Out Fiesta. Yeah. I am your host and humble narrator, Richard Houghton. This is Kristen Keith. It's me. Yay. This is Rob Hutchbeth. Yay, there he is. This is Juliana Briscoe. <laughs> Before we go any further, we need to do the super popular Get to Know the Cast Better segment. Uh, yeah, I love this part. I've got a question for you, Kristen. Yes. What was the first concert you went to? Uh, like rock concert? Could be concert? any kind of concert. Uh, if you want it uh, to be rock concert, if that's easier. Well, I've been to concert. tons of symphony concerts, but I guess <clears throat> the power station. All right. Got to see John Taylor. Very nice. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Rob? Uh, let's see. Well, you know, as a kid, my parents took me to lots of concerts. But the That's first nice. concert I actually bought a ticket for and got a ride to was uh, David Bowie. Wow. Uh, Serious Moonlight impressive. Tour. That's very impressive. Yes. Yeah. Juliana? I mean, the only uh, uh, concert I've ever seen was at Dallas Music Hall for the, uh, what's his name, impersonator. It, yeah. It was 
It was just uh, on top of my head. Weird Al Yankovic? No. <laughs> Rich, Rich Little? <laughs> no. She was like an old jazz guy. I don't remember. It was awesome. She was really impressed. <laughs> like, yeah, I really liked it. I'm just like blanking. That's okay. <laughs> Mine was Billy Joel in 1979. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know which tour. Maybe the Stranger Tour. I don't know. Woo. All right, far out. Yeah. Let's uh, let's fiesta. Fiesta. Right. Fisto Mall. Replenish. Replenish. Part, Part one. one. Could you have parked farther out? Could you have turned me down the first time I asked you out? You're my social work. <laughs> you're a, you're a. Uh, Excuse us. Uh, would you help us? I don't usually approach strangers. I don't usually approach strangers in an unmarked white van, but today I will get within grabbing distance of your van. Their arms aren't that long, Genevieve. What? Get closer. Even, even if they do grab me, it will be an improvement on how my day is going. Well, we're not grabbing anyone. We need help finding our lost puppies. Yeah, and we're using video games to find them. Wait, video games and puppies. You know, that's starting to sound a little fishy. Genevieve, do they have video games that find puppies? <laughs> when you ask questions that dumb, it makes me wish that my aneurysm was progressing more quickly. Why do you think I ask them? Oh, oh because you're a fluckhead. Hey, van people, uh, we don't believe you, okay? And we're calling the cops. Oh, hold on. You two are just going to be part of our Practical Jokes podcast. Podcast? Who, who the fuck listens to podcasts? Uh, can we apologize by buying you milkshakes in the mall? Milkshakes are the traditional peace offering of my people. Fucking love milkshakes! Yeah, sure. Park your creepy van and meet us in the food court. I bet, I bet they will park their... I bet they'll park their creepy van closer than you did. For the love of Ed Asner, let it go, Genevieve. It's the Parks Mall of the Great Southwest Food Court. We reserve these seats for our guests of honor. Is that us? Of course it is, silly willy. Men can't call me that. Well, we reserve these seats for our guests of honor. I thought they had a strict no savesies policy. We got connections. You got them? Well, make yourselves comfortable. I'll uh, be right back with your peace offering milkshakes. Oh, here you go. Wow, that was fast. Well, why are they in white cups with no logos? Genevieve, the nice people are offering us milkshakes. Oh, what the hell? I don't feel so hot. Oh, I, I feel even less hot than you. Really? You're really one-upping me on that? Oh. <sighs> All right, drag them back to the van. Do you think someone in the mall will try to stop us? <laughs> <laughs> what's going to happen to Genevieve and Lindsay and what's the story with Blaine and Paula find out in the thrilling conclusion of the next episode of Far Out Fiesta <laughs> Prison Saloon Part, 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 one. part, part one. one Part One what did you order for your last meal, kid? I figured that my last chance to fuck with Vicky Shark Breath. Um, dear, I, in the crow hall, uh, I, so I ordered a chicken fried steak with a snicker bar gravy. Uh, Viv, there's no <coughs> such thing as snicker bar gravy. Oh, I know that, and you know that, but Shark Breath is a compulsive pleaser. And a compulsive coat hanger murderer. Oh, true that. Well, what did you order? Well, knowing that the state is going to stop my heart soon, I didn't have that much of an appetite, but I went with prison surf and turf. Oh, Salisbury steak with a fish stick poking through it. And I went with a, a fillingless Twinkie for dessert. Oh, that's right. You are allergic to Twinkie filling. Well, not, that, not that it matters now. <laughs> well, did you regret sending that trash can full of flaming poo to the governor's wife? Well, I certainly didn't think that would cause them to give us the death penalty. The look on their face was almost worth dying for. Hello, ladies. Uh, Warden Mooney. Pete. Oh, Pete and I came to keep you company during your last meal. And I'm going to finish eating thing you don't eat. Oh, good old Pete. Always willing to snatch a condemned to death woman's last scraps. You know, I probably won't eat them. I want to put something with trace amounts of your saliva in my freezer to preserve it. Oh, not if I get to that saliva first. Well, Pete, since we're dying soon, I want you to know I always had a crush on you. What, is that why you gouged my eye out with a prison fork? Well, I 
was bored. I guess now is as good a time as any to let you know that I have had dreams about being out of prison and having sex with you. Oh, how was I? <laughs> Disappointing. Well, I could make that dream come true. Oh. Well, since we're confessing things, Ward Moody. Oh, well, uh, you had a crush on me. Oh, hell no. I <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not that funny. Oh. All right, 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 right. What's, what's your confession? Oh, you remember all those women I said I didn't strangle and then dissolve their bones? Mm, sure. Well, I strangled them and dissolved their bones. I, I knew it. <laughs> and I have sex dreams with Pete, too. Well, that makes three of us. I fucking you, sex appeal. All right, ladies, it's time. Oh, I guess this is really happening. <laughs> I love you, Bill. I love you, Lucy. All right, this way, ladies. Dead, beautiful women who have sex dreams about me walking. <laughs> Is this the end of Lucy and Viv? Find out in the next exciting episode of Far Out Fiesta. Let's boo crap. Popcorn. Popcorn. A walk, a walk in, in the, the park. park. Part one. What a beautiful day to be in the park. Your opinions are lame about everything, Cubehead. Oh, don't be such a pessimist, Lucy. Well, you even you even try to tell me what to do today, and I will hide your insulin. But I need it to live. Oh, it's a wonderful day in the park. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, then why were you busting my prepubescent balls, Lacey? That's easy. You suck. I'm not sure talking about your prepubescent balls is, is, is appropriate, Charles B. Do you see what I have to live with every day? A foppish little brother who thinks he's the universe's moral compass. I don't even know what foppish means. Adjective. Concerned with the clothes and appearance of an effective and excessive way. He is foppish and vain. A foppish dandy. Oh, you're so wise, Stewie. I looked it up on my phone. Why are you sucking up to me, Lazy? You're the coolest one of my friends. Friends? Mm, that might be pushing it. Maybe if you threw a stick for me once in a while. Mm. I'll throw this stick for you, Stewie. Mm, let's talk. More throwing sticks. Mm, there. I threw it. Right up to a tree. I'd throw a stick for you, Stubby, <clears throat> but I'm afraid it would mess up my $4,500 manicure. <laughs> Let me see your hands. See? Do you like it? I just want to see the ends of a child who spent an idiotic amount of money on a manicure look like. I could show you mine, too. No time for that now. Throw another damn stick for me. We ain't getting any younger. <laughs> there you go. Now that's how you throw a stick. <laughs> TGFN. Um, you two must have the richest and dumbest parents in the world to spend that much money on child manicures. Our parents are very rich. And very dumb. <laughs> yeah, um, they're buying us matching helicopters when we turn seven. Oh, no. You can pay us to ride on our helicopters, Cubehead. Well, that, that's not what I'm oh knowing about. Well, my manicure was not messed up when I threw the stick. Well, that's not what I'm oh knowing about either. Then what is it? Where's Stooby? Stooby! Stooby! What has happened to Stooby? Find out on next week's Far Out Fiesta. I love you, and I fantasize about you, Stooby. Okay, that's just weird. <laughs> that's my, my Rodeo Clown, Clown part, part one. one. Mm, baby doll, you don't look like you feel so good. I don't, Jimbo. I think I can cure you. By, by taking me to the doctor? Well, maybe. But before we hit the quack shack... You call the doctor's office the quack shack. <laughs> well, it's a part of a bit I'm workshopping at open mics. I mean, do whatever you have to, Chimbo. I, I feel so bad. My, my clams are handy. I, I have at least two fevers. My lips are starting to crumble. All right, all right. Can, now, can you dance and lean back? You mean... Limbo! Jimbo! <laughs> Medicinal limbo. I'm just not feeling it. How low can you go? Oh. Oh. All right, there she goes. Way, way, way. Oh. She's leaning back and swaying those oh. hips. and Oh, she's going really low. Oh, 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 too low. Too low. Oh, no, baby, baby, get, get up, baby. Come I, on now. I can't, baby. Call an ambulance. I, 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 well, I tell you what, I can do better than that. Well, you say that, but it never is. I'll call Roy and Dottie. The idiot.
idiots that probably killed our kids. Why, Jimbo? Why? Uh, hey, hey there, buddy. Hey, hey, Margo's fighting for her life over here. Uh, hey. They'll be right over. Well, they have to hurry. Right over after they finish their Thrones reenactment. Oh, uh, Jimbo! I can smell my organs shutting down. Uh, they're here. Well, we got here as fast as we could. And not just because you wanted us to hear your death rattle. Oh, well, she's not doing well. Now, do you have any harebrained things that you would like to try on her? Ooh, a couple. Well, before we get started, Dottie, how about uh, you put on that uh, sexy nurse costume Margo wore last Halloween? Oh. <laughs> Is wearing my old Halloween costume an FDA-approved treatment method? How do I look? Mm, great. In fact, give us uh, three minutes to do it on your bed before we treat her. Jimbo, I don't want them doing it on my bed. Hey, save your strength, baby. Oh, we're back. Oh, that was fast. <sighs> we took a speed screwing class. <laughs> okay, Margo, uh, this may feel a little awkward. I'm going to jam this Ninja Turtle toy into the ball of your foot. <laughs> Let me know when you feel the pressure. Oh, it broke the skin. Oh, I have a Ninja Turtle stuck in my foot. That means it's working. Not it. Do your magic. Okay, Margo, give me your hands. I don't seem to have control over my hands right now. Guess I have to do everything. I'm taking your hands and pressing them together. Ah! I'm losing consciousness. Here's the church. Now pull out her index fingers. Hey, I'm the costume nurse here, and this is a steeple. Open the doors. Hey, hey, she's flatlining. Will this be the end of Margo? Find out next week in the thrilling conclusion of That's My Rodeo Clown. I don't see all the people. Where are all the people, Roy? <laughs> Practical Kung Fu, the robbery, part one. I find it strange that an anonymous donor would pay us to do all this. Uh, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, I wouldn't. I'm allergic to oats, and horses they tend to have very oaty breath. My horse's breath smelled like tapioca. I, I think that was the infant the county took away from you for, for trying to ride it, huh. wasn't it? I had forgotten all about baby chestnut. This boarding house makes my blood run cold. I think that's your ice cream bra, though. Oh, or, or my popsicle panties. <laughs> I don't know how you were ever going to find the package. Oh, I love the way you said the package, <laughs> just like Jason Bourne would. And I get compared to him 23-6. Uh, a day and an hour off. Yup. Uh, oh. Well, <laughs> oh, there, oh, there they are. I, nestled behind the workout trampoline. Oh, I think those trampolines would be more fun if we were the size of plush toys. <laughs> I read your master thesis, Stephanie. Yeah, and then you colored on it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, hurry up! I sense that the knuckleheads who live here will be home any minute. Let's go. Any minute later. Oh, it's so good to come home from a hard day of catching fish just to ridicule them and then release them. Taking those fish self-esteems down a peg! <laughs> yeah, Kung Fu, Lewis. Kung Fu, bud! You know, fish are so snooty. Especially snoot fish. But something is amiss in our boarding house. Um, well, let's see, it's not me. Uh, no boobies or vagina? I mean, something is wrong in our boarding house room. Well, yeah, I mean, rats with pouches full of rat joeys. No, that's not it. The cottage cheese is still on the mini workout trampoline. That's not it either. Our neon sign that says, please recycle, but eating your taxidermy seems fine. <laughs> not just fine, it kicks ass. That's not it either. It's our collection of army men melted into hilarious positions. But we left it in a safe place, adjacent to the workout trampoline. I think we've been robbed. Why do you say that? Well, one of the pouched rats has on a human-sized burglary beret. Oh, and her Joey has a burglar mask. And the burglar beret says Morgan. And there's an address. Do you think that's the hat's name and where it lives? Or a clue. Either way, I'd like to find the prowlers, but I'd also like to find out what kind of an apartment a hat can afford. Kung Fu, bud! Kung Fu, Lewis! Will Bud and Lewis be able to find their stolen booty? <laughs> booty. booty. <laughs> <laughs> find out on the next thrilling episode of Far Out Fiesta. 
The Nick Home, Home Babies, Babies of Richardson. Richardson. Lori, Lori Grackle, Grackle, part one. I'm Baby Teresa. <clears throat> Baby Teresa. Who says an infant can't run a multinational corporation? What? Everyone? Okay. I didn't want to do that anyway. I just want a, a good rocking. The Authentic Home Babies of Richardson are attending the nanny auction looking for a replacement for baby Teresa's recently disappeared nanny. The nanny auctions are so exciting, baby slate. It's so exciting that I wet my diapers. I'm pretty sure you had already done that. I bet if I peeked in there, it would look like a melted yellow crayon. Baby Jimmy, he should be here soon. As you know, Baby Slate, I was very unhappy with my nanny situ. Look! Look! Hands! <laughs> I have hands! <laughs> Baby Portia, I was very, I was very unhappy with my nanny situation before Father had her disappeared. I want my mother and father to be the gangster, just for the heck of it. You're not supposed to use that word. Heck? Mother! Mother! You're supposed to call her Elizabeth. Oh, baby Jimmy is here. Hello, baby Jimmy. I kiss you on the cheeks, but I'm strapped into this bouncy seat. Bounce. <laughs> it's quite, you know what? It's quite the ethnically ambiguous selection of nannies today. And do you see anyone who you might want to love like a replacement parent, <gasps> baby Teresa? <laughs> Good morning. Oh, she's, she's working the crowd. I like that. Oh, it is such an honor to even be considered as worthy candidate to assist your children's needs. She's humble. I like that. There's nothing in the world I love more than children. I like jangling keys more. And I like to jangle my keys. Oh, she's good. <laughs> I'd like to explain my two pillars of health care and child care. Pillar number one, a clean baby is a happy baby. Oh, it's true. I love baths. Pillar number two, a baby's mind is like a sponge. My goal is to make your baby's sponge mind suck up the right things. Uh, that second pillar was a little weak. I'm glad there were only two. Yeah, but I, I like her. I'm, I'm going to make an extra sticky poop to, to get my parents' attention so they will, they will bid on her. Oh, oh wow, wow. How, how can such a tiny human produce such an all-encompassing smell? Ah, peas and sweet potatoes. Ah, what do you two think about her? She can powder my bottom anytime. Uh, there's something not quite right about her. Oh, my, my parents are bidding on her. Ah, they got her. Ah. And you must be baby Teresa. <laughs> Oh, so beautiful. Still, it wouldn't hurt to lose a few pounds. Oh, oh, but I weigh 11. We're going to have so much fun together. Let's see how this lipstick looks on you. Yeah, yeah, there, there's definitely something not white about her. Has baby Teresa found the perfect nanny? Is baby Jimmy right? Is there something not right about Lori Grackle? Find out on the next week's thrilling conclusion. President Squid, Squid, the, the final, final chapter. chapter. Former President Squid, your TV offers are drying up. I don't think it's the volatility is the issue. Well, what is it? Let me put it delicately. Are you sure there's no need to spare your feelings, former President Squid? You're very hard to understand. There, I said it. <laughs> There's something you can do about it. <laughs> I know that squid to human voice translation is risky. <laughs> yes, I would have the surgery. <laughs> of course, I'll be by your side the whole time, former President Squid. Shall I book it? <laughs> I will book it. Don't worry. What could possibly go wrong? Um, welcome to the hospital. I am Dr. Radizwell, and I'll be humifying those squid vocal cords. I'm Carmen, your anesthesia, um, lady. Anesthesiologist. I'm leaving, former President Squid. Talk to you on the other side. 
Ma'am, go. Is she gone? Yes. I'll just gas him first. Wait, wait, why? I mean, do you love squid? What's that supposed to mean? Uh, is he out? Uh, who knows how human drugs work on squids? Well, he seems to be out. Okay, well, have I ever mentioned to you how much I hate squid? I mean, look what he's shaped like. <clears throat> he's out, so huh, I can rub my butt on his squid head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I can stand in a kiddie pool and eat really messy corn while I do his surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and I can put four of his legs in hot water and five in cold so so that he'll pee. Um, yeah, yeah, I got that. Um, I did, like, uh, uh, okay. So, like, I did part of his surgery. Um, probably close enough. So you can start bringing him back. Okay. Oh, oh, that's not good. Um, what's the matter? He's not coming out of it. What do you mean? He's not coming out of it. Dead? Run away! Run away! Uh, I heard your medical team saying run away, and I thought I'd check on former President Squid. No! Is this the final curtain for former President Squid? Find out in the thrilling conclusion in next week's Far Out Fiesta! Far Out. <laughs> and this has been Far Out Fiesta, episode 94, to be continued. Wow. So, this is our amazing cast, Kristen oh, Keith, yeah, Rob Hutsmith, Julia Briscoe. Yeah. Richard Houghton. Yeah, Richard. All right. Writer, director, creator. That's me. Of the Far Out Fiesta. Mm -hmm. Yes. Triple, the far triple threat. Out fiesta. Houghton. Oh. Hey, oh, no. Mr. Spacely's here. <laughs> Houghton. <laughs> Is anybody working on anything cool that they'd like to plug or discuss? Uh, am I? I don't know. <laughs> I have a shout out, but I'll wait. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I have nothing to shout. Okay, well, I'd like to give a quick shout out to, uh, what is his name? His name is Skip Griffith uh -huh. at Donna Marie's, Donna Mary's, sorry, Donna Mary's Mexican restaurant in East Plano oh. on Park oh. and Los Rios. He's very uh -huh. filmmaker friendly. He let us shoot in his place. Nice. He wasn't even open on Sunday and he opened up for us oh, and he wow. cooked for us and he made us oh, food. Wow. Isn't there like, really? right next door to Make Your Mark Studios? Why, yes, it is, wow. Rob. I, I, you know, I, I've been there. I've, I've been there, and you, you've been there. The Mexican restaurant or Make Your Mark Studios? <laughs> Both. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. That's awesome. And, and, and it was fantastic. Yeah. It is fantastic. Yeah. It was good. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. Gosh. Sure you got to eat. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>